Joaquin New Simply spoiled milk here, Meat Boys. We got Joaquin, new Milkman Buckley, taking on Chris Curtis, a.k.a. the Milkman, who is coming to this one as a plus-135 dog and just suffered his first UFC loss, right? He got absolutely outclassed by Jack the Joker Hermanson. It was in a co-meet event. It was on that London card, an absolute banger of a card. And it was a fight where Chris Curtis came into it with a lot of hype. A lot of people thought he was going to get the job done. And... Essentially, Jack Hermanson reminded everyone that there was levels to this game, and Chris Curtis got simply outclassed on the feet. He was seemingly mystified by Jack Hermanson's footwork and couldn't close the distance, couldn't cut off the angles required, and ultimately couldn't have any success against Jack Hermanson. And it was surprising because he had won three straight. He made that debut against Phil Hawes where it took him so long for the UFC to finally give him his chance. And once he got it, he definitely capitalized on the opportunity because he smoked Phil Hawes. After that, he did the same thing to Brendan Allen. And then he got a nice win over Rodolfo Vieira where he was able to go the full 15 and show that he can win contests in the UFC, not just by finish, but by outlasting guys with his cardio as well. So a surprise outcome, that, how that went down versus Jack Hermanson. And we'll see how he re, uh, how he rebounds, how he responds to this new UFC loss adversity. And he's going up against Joaquin Buckley, who at a minus 155 favorites is also coming off a recent loss. It was a fight against Nasruddin Imovov, which was in Imovov's backyard. It was in France. And it was a fight where Buckley did make a decent account of himself. Uh, there was moments he even won around in that fight, but ultimately he just didn't, he wasn't able to string together enough good stuff in order to take out Imovov, and Imovov is a tough 185er, so you're, it's, you wonder what, what his ceiling is, and before that he had won three straight, similar to what Chris Curtis did, right? He took out Albert Jiraev in a fight where he was a very decent dog, and Abdul Razak Hassan, he won a split decision. That was uh, right before then. And then before that, he took out Antonio Ahoyo. So some good stuff from Buckley. Does have the loss to DeKirico, though, where it's like, how does that even happen? So what are your thoughts on this one? Do you like the matchmaking? And do you see either guy having a decided advantage? Or is this just kind of bum-on-bum -bum violence and you're expecting a snooze fest? Honestly, yeah, I think this is bum-on-bum -bum violence. Um, but... Uh, I got to go with Buckley on this one. You know, I, I think Chris Curtis is just all downhill from here. You know, he was just a uh, giant, you know, sour milk was in my mouth after that last performance. And I just can't get the bitterness out of my mouth. So I, I got to go with Buckley, which I never thought I'd ever say, to be honest, because I think he's an absolute bum. But that's just how big of a bomb I think Chris Curtis is. Uh, he's a spoiled brat. You know, uh, he cries about everything. And, it, hey, at least Buckley isn't crying and whining during the fight. Uh, he loses with, in, with some integrity um, and doesn't baby about it. Uh, but, you know, he's 28. He's only He should be only getting better. So I like that fact. They're basically the same fighter, except Buckley mixes it up right he throws kicks he throws punches he throws bo he throws kind of everything he throws crazy stuff sometimes chris curtis just throws hands like he doesn't do anything besides that and he, you know he stuffs takedowns that's cool but buckley's not gonna try to take him down i think this is such a good matchup for buckley um because he knows that he's not gonna have to worry about kicks i mean chris curtis has zero kicks in his you know, in his arsenal. It's like, what are you doing? All he had to do was kick Joker back or check a kick. He did none of that. He cried and complained and tried to throw little punches. But he's, he's got to remember, this is not boxing. This is MMA, mixed martial arts. And Buckley understands that. So uh, it, it makes sense that he's the slight favorite and makes sense why I'm riding with him because I think he's just the more diverse fighter with more, you know, tools in the bag, I would say. Yeah, for sure. I can see it that way. Absolutely. And, you know, definitely from a sportsmanship perspective, it wasn't a great look for Chris Curtis to be, you know, throwing the double birds up at Jack Hermanson and seemingly like getting frustrated with Jack Hermanson for having like a sound game plan. Like, I don't know what, what he expected, but uh, Jack Hermanson just really fought well, very technically sound and Chris Curtis didn't really make a great account of himself in grappling with the fact that he just got outclassed. And uh, it was a bummer to see because for sure Chris Curtis was kind of getting a lot of new fans, it seemed like. And then 
it kind of all went away. So this is a good opportunity to perhaps steal some hype from Joaquin Buckley, who you might not know Joaquin Buckley's name, you know, the casual fan, but most likely they've seen that highlight of that amazing uh, knockout of the year over Impa Kasanga Nai. So this is someone with a little bit of, I don't want to say star power, but uh, a little bit of hype that Chris Curtis might be able to hijack if he uh, is able to capitalize on this opportunity. But this is one of those weird ones meet where, uh, they used to seeing it one way, Tapology, however, is seeing it different. So interested to see how Buckley's minus 150, around plus 130, plus 140 for Curtis. But he's garnering a solid 63% from Tapology. Only 37% is rolling with Buckley, and it's majority beige on both sides. Are you at all surprised that Curtis is getting so much love from Tapology? And do you think that it's also going the distance for uh, whoever wins this one? Um. You know, I, I could see Curtis getting knocked out. If Curtis wins, it's by decision. If Buckley wins, it's going to be knockout, maybe decision. Um, but yeah, I, I see this more being a decision fight, to be honest. Yeah, because Curt Curtis is still a tough guy. Like, I mean, we've never seen him get finished in the UFC yet, so I can't really think he has a weak chin or anything. Um, so it'll be very interesting. Um, but I, I could see Buckley just picking him apart, throwing, uh, you know, kicks to the chest, kicks to the head, kicks to the calf, and then... Curtis just gets frustrated because, hey, what are you doing, bro? You're not supposed to kick me. Let's fight. <laughs> like he did versus Jack Hermanson. And, um, but Buckley, if if he has any sort of IQ, he will take, uh, you know, a little bit of, you know, hey, here's the game plan to beat Chris Curtis from, you know, the Joker because he showed clearly what to do. And that's be faster, keep your distance, and keep tapping him up. And clearly it frustrates him. He does not like that. Yeah, for sure. And that's why I'm with you. I'm riding with Buckley. I think that he is smart enough to uh, enter the fight with that game plan because Joker absolutely just wrote the playbook. And when I was listening to Buckley uh, on the uh, Joe Rogan experience, it did sound as though he was very confident going into this fight. Uh, seemed like he was excited about the uh, uh, opponent of Chris Curtis and that he seems to feel that he's leaps and bounds better than the action man, uh, a.k.a. the milk boy. So for sure, with you all the way, I'm going to go Buckley. I think he goes the distance, though. I think this looks similar to that uh, fight against uh, Albert Duraev, uh, except I think that it just goes for 15 minutes as opposed to getting stopped. So I'm going with uh, Buckley. Wouldn't say it's the most confident of picks, and I do think there's a world where Chris Curtis gets this win. So personally, I'll probably be laying off, but uh, for me, boy's sake, I'm going Buckley and by decision. Any last thoughts? No. I uh, agree with the pick. Let us know in the comments who you take. Can you take in spoiled milk or nomaz?